And DiBiase says, wealth is what it's all about. He is rich in ring prowess, flush with technical skill, and well off in wrestling ability. I really miss these kind of promos. Uh, that is promos. a stretched metaphor right there. <laughs> they used to do these all the time with the guys. Like, Hogan would be facing Terry Funk, so his whole promo was about Texas or whatever. This, I mean, I thought he was going to say that he was... What were the three terms that he used again, Vinny? Rich in ring prowess, flush with technical skill, and well off in wrestling ability. I thought he was going to talk about his, his uh, member when he said well off. Well endowed. I'm sure you did. That's where I thought it was going. Yeah. But it didn't. That was I mean, it, it was late night. I suppose they could have gone something. It's true. Yeah. It was the main event. Very late at night. Yeah. So, uh, the upshot of all this is DiBiase he hints that, yes, indeed, he does have a secret plan in place, and his money is bought. Oh, a secret plan, you say. His money has paid for huh. something. Yeah, sure has. Everyone hold that thought. <laughs> Sean Mooney asks the Ultimate Warrior about DiBiase's money. The warrior calmly explains, and he really was fairly calm for most of this. Dollars do not buy desire. Bankrolls do not build biceps. Well, warrior. <laughs> of all people. That shit ain't <laughs> cheap, buddy. <laughs> and there was something about C-notes that I forget what the PF was, but he says it is not the power of money that powers him. It's the power of his warriors flowing through his veins. They cannot be bought. And he asks DiBiase about sacrifice and what price he is willing to pay. You know, I've been watching this wrestling for a long time. And when I was younger, I used to read all those bodybuilding magazines. And boy, the warrior is every big juiced up guy who wants you to know that he still would be big and jacked up if it wasn't for the juice. Mm -hmm. We were watching that uh, Warrior documentary. We got really mad at that guy and said, I was 290 pounds of rock-solid muscle before I ever touched the shit. And mm. I'm like, come on, brother. And that here he is talking about money doesn't buy this physique. Dollars don't build biceps. I was like, I got it. Okay, you're strong, dude. And he would have been big without the juice. Let's not, yeah. let's not uh, gloss over that aspect of this. You know what money also can't buy is this $1 million mullet that he has it was like, fabulous like like pompadour in the front and party in the back <laughs> it was very impressive it was it was like like you've been in a wind tunnel <laughs> okay it's very aer aerodynamic it's like if brian setzer and joe elliott happy birthday had a uh, child <laughs> smooth craig smooth it craig. was very well feathered i couldn't help but notice it was, it was, he put as much attention into his mullet as he did to his physique i think that's fair to say no he didn't all right <laughs> Your commentators for this show are Vince McMahon and Rowdy Roddy Piper. And they promised that in addition to all the great action tonight, there will also be, it's a few days after the holiday, they're going to have post-Thanksgiving diet tips. And yes, it's what you think it is. Mm -hmm. The opener for the World Wrestling Federation Championship, the Ultimate Warrior versus Ted DiBiase. At the very beginning of this match, it was really weird. There was There was very, very obvious editing. Like, at one point, Warrior's just at the ring or something like that, and then, you know, they go to lock up, and all of a sudden, they teleported even closer to each other. Yes. And uh, maybe they would have edited the match anyway, but the show was originally supposed to be an hour and a half long, and then it got cut to an hour. So they had to cut, like, you know, 20 minutes. Uh, well, they, they cut the tag team match out, and then I think to make it fit in the one-hour slot... I think they had to do some editing throughout the show as well. So I don't think they would have edited this match if they didn't have to make it all of a sudden fit into 42 minutes or whatever it was, 49 minutes. But uh, there, was some, there was some editing during this match. And it wasn't in places where you'd expect it. Like, Warrior goes for a sunset flip. Oh, edit that off the thing. He really did. Yeah, they actually I, showed that. I swear that. to God, he did. <laughs> yeah. And it was not good. Well, but Ted DiBiase did everything in his power to make it look good. It was much better because it wasn't even like he was running. He blocked a suplex and then from a standing position tried to leap over DiBiase and Sunset flip him. Yeah, and he barely made it over. Yes. And then DiBiase, to save the move, took the hardest flatback bump you've ever seen in your life. I mean... He'd have been better off getting last ride a last ride power bomb from the Undertaker. So there actually, there actually was a story to this match beyond just actually the opposite of what you think going in. So DiBiase early on hits a vertical suplex, 
simple basic move, but it's one of his higher impact moves. But he hit it one time, and every other time he tried it after that, Warrior always countered it. And he countered it into things like backslides and the aforementioned sunset flip. Yeah. So as Vince McMahon notes, of all things, Warrior was winning the technical wrestling battle, and TV Aussie was having to brawl to keep up with him. Yes. They were using each other's playbook. So, DiBiase was awesome. Warrior, having watched a lot of these, is not nearly as bad as his reputation. Well. In I a mean, heavily edited match. It was a heavily edited match with Ted DiBiase. DiBiase yes. So I'm not sure that this is a fair baseline for uh, for The Undertaker. But he was he was fine in the match. He got blown up. I mean, he's, he always does. He's gasping for air there at the end. But I got to give the guy credit. Like, I've seen guys get blown up, and they're, they're like, done. Uh, Avalanche and Big Wood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They were oh, yeah. so blown up that they tried to do the Irish whip corner to corner, and they literally both walked across the ring, and they barely made it walking. Yes, the Ultimate Warrior main eventer was better than these two well, indie guys in the third were, match. He was so much better, but like he would get very, very, very blown up, but he still had to run, and so he would run, even though he was nearly on death's when door. When he absolutely had to, he could move. Yes. And when he didn't have to, he didn't move. There was a lot of not moving. There was a lot of not moving in this match, that is true. But it's a very basic setup and story, and he makes his big comeback and blocks yet another suplex, and he warriors up, hits three clotheslines in the tackle. And at this point, Virgil attacks for the disqualification. It is funny to look back, and granted there was going to be some crowd swinging, but you could actually see the crowd's excitement. Yeah. Back then, you could do a fuck finish... And the fans were happy if the babyface got his arm raised. So, like, we watched this match. How long was this match? It felt like it was, like, 14 minutes long. About that, yeah. But just, they, under, just under 10. Was it? Yes, why? Anyway, it felt longer. They wrestle, and not in a bad way. They wrestle, and they wrestle, and they wrestle, and they wrestle, and they wrestle. And Warrior finally hits his finish, and this bloke runs in for the shitty DQ. We've mm-hmm. seen it a million times. But man, when he ran in and they announced that the Warrior was the winner via disqualification, these fans were totally satisfied. Ah, our guy won. He got the W. Yeah, he got the, he got his hand raised. Great. Yes. They accepted it. So I can only assume this is November. Spoiler, everyone. Warrior drops the title to uh, Sergeant Slaughter at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. I assume between here and there, DiBiase is getting title shots around the loop. So. I'm sure that's what was happening. Yeah. So, Warrior wins via DQ, but it's Virgil, so he's fighting back. He goes to press slam Virgil over his head when the Macho King is going to run down and take his scepter and whack Warrior in the abs, his well-sculpted abs. And this all happens, but then, first of all, it's Warrior, and the the, the margin for error, well, there's there's a lot of room for error, because he makes a lot of errors, but... uh, Second of all, he pressed Virgil over his head early. So you had to hold him up there for a while. I know he's big and strong, but Virgil is also a big person. And Warrior is probably getting a little bit tired. And finally, Macho Man hits the ring. And he hits Warrior with the scepter. So Warrior goes to drop Virgil. But the way Macho Man is standing, he is now standing under Virgil's feet. Which means Virgil's head goes plummeting towards the earth. I screamed. He seemed to be alive. And... Warriors down, and Savage beat him up for what felt like 15 minutes. You know what you miss, Vinny, is that uh, when he goes to press him, and it's exactly what I was talking about, this guy's totally, completely, absolutely blown up. But the spot requires a press slam, and so he tries. And he gets Virgil onto his head, and he, he starts to go down, because he's going to go down and then use his momentum clean, to press Clean and it. jerk, basically. And he, he goes down, and they immediately cut to Macho Man Randy Savage. And as Randy Savage slides into the ring, Virgil's still on his head. Yeah. So what I think happened was he couldn't get the dude up. Mm. And he probably tried a couple of times, and this was an edit to, uh, to save face for Warrior, actually not being able to press uh, Virgil here after. And my notes here, by the way, I've got a thing here, Craig. It says it was a 12-minute match. I timed it. It was just under 10. Maybe, Brian, your notes include the commercials that were edited out? Perhaps. There was a commercial break. Perhaps. But anyway. I did appreciate Sensational Sherry kicking off her shoes before she put the, uh, well, the stockings to to, uh, 
Ultimate Warrior. That was a Sher- nice Sherry touch. was involved. Savage was beating him a lot and uh, uh, choking him with a scepter. And there was one spot where they're, they're trying to stand in the way, and he's supposed to do the flying elbow over a dozen guys and yes. land, hit the elbow on Warrior. But Warrior's out of position. <laughs> He's like curled up in his side. So Savage just jumps over everyone anyway and does like an axe handle where he lands on his knees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then he came back and hit the elbow later. It went forever. And then they finally pull Savage off. Warrior is left alone in the ring. They're not checking on him. They're not peeling him off the mat. They're, not, they're just leaving him to be. And he slowly, slowly fights to his feet and looks at his belt and slowly lifts his big, heavy championship belt up over his head, and his music plays, and the place goes crazy, and Vince McMahon is bellowing and roaring and raging and spitting like he has just won the title of Mania all over again. <laughs> he stood up. You know, it's funny. You look at uh, Roman Reigns when he was booed for six straight years, and you look at everything that Vince tried to do to get this guy cheered, every possible storyline, and they were all clever, but nobody was going for him. This warrior thing was not working. But, man, you look at this match and the finish and the cradling the title and the dramatically getting to his feet and holding up the belt and Vince freaking out. He was still trying his damnedest to get this guy over, and it just wasn't working. As far as Ultimate Warrior matches go, this actually was not bad. And yeah, I blame, this was a good match. I blame Ted DiBiase, to be honest with you. You blame him for it being uh, good? Absolutely. I I credit him for it being good. Either way, what an credit odd choice blame. Of words. I blame Warrior for not being great. Sure. But I would say that it was You good. can credit him for not being great as well. Yes, I could. But uh, I could not blame <laughs> DiBiase for being good. I don't think those words mean what you think they mean. Unless you I, wanted it to be bad. No, they actually do. And, uh... <laughs> One sec. Max, come. I've got a zoo over here. Are you in a here, farm, man. or what's going on? Might as well be. Hang on, i got to get rid of this dog. Holy smokes. <laughs> We're going to find out a lot about Andrade with these three matches. And I hope they're yeah. great. Right, dog? So, we're not looking for a five-star match. We're looking for Max Sit. <laughs> you shaking your fist at the dog? No, it's one of the hand gestures that they taught us to to get get him to sit when he was in training. I see. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.